In this video, I'm going to go over the absolute basics of running code on multiple threads in an iOS app. I have an app right now that has an image view that I want to display a random image every time I tap the random button. Uh, and then I've just got a switch and a slider down here just for show. Uh, but I want to download an image from a network and display it in that image view. So I have a URL that I can use. If I use this URL, make a get request using that URL, it will always be a different random image every single time. So I'm going to use this as a way of populating the image view with that random image. So in my view controller, when the button is pressed, I will run the following code. So basically this function is going to download the data from this URL and then create a UI image from that data and populate the image view with that image. So if I run the application now and push that random image button, after about a second or two, I get that random image. And if I push it again, I'll get another random image. And notice that when I push the button, the button actually stays in that highlighted state, like it's being pushed down. And if I go to get a random image and then try toggling the switch or updating the slider, like while the image is changing, I can't actually do anything, nothing changes. So if I go to get the image and then quickly try and update this UI, nothing happens until the image has been downloaded, then I can update these things. But while the image is downloading, I can't update the UI, the UI is completely frozen. And the reason that's happening is because this HTTP request to get the image takes a little bit of time. My computer has to send the request to the server, the server has to respond with a stream of image data back to my computer here, and that can take like a second or a little bit longer. And during that time, the entire UI just gets frozen in my iOS app. And a second might not seem like that much time, but it feels so long to any user using your iPhone app, they'll feel like your app's actually broken. So it's actually become unacceptable for a UI to freeze like this. And Apple might even reject your app to the App Store if this happens. So let's look at these steps in order. If I tap the button, I'm creating a URL object, then I'm downloading that image using the URL, then I'm creating a new UI image from that data and populating the image view. And each thing happens sequentially, one after the other, and nothing else in the application can do anything while all of these steps are running. So from line 21 to 24 here, as long as these lines of code are running in order, nothing else in my application can do anything. And this network request really just demonstrates any task that takes a little bit of time, a noticeable amount of time. So this could be a network request, or it could be some sort of complex algorithm, or maybe you're saving data to a file or something. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just a really easy example. But if you have a task that takes a noticeable amount of time, then if you run it like this anyway, it could freeze up the UI and give a really bad user experience. And the reason the UI is freezing isn't because I'm doing this long running task. That's fine, I can download data for my app. Apps do that all the time. It's because we're doing this on the same thread that is processing all of the UI. Imagine you're at a grocery store that has eight checkout lanes and eight people go to check out and buy their groceries at the exact same time. This would be fine because there's eight checkout lanes so everyone would just get their own lane and they'd get to pay and they wouldn't have to wait for anyone else and everything would run really smoothly. But now imagine that same situation with only one checkout lane open. Everyone would have to line up one after the other and people would be waiting around unnecessarily just because the other lanes weren't opened up. And this is kind of what's happening here. The iPhone kind of has eight checkout lanes and I'm only using one of them to do absolutely everything in my application. And by default, when we just start writing code like this in this synchronous way, we are utilizing only one of the many checkout lanes that we have on an iOS device. So obviously this is wasteful. We're not utilizing all of the power we have in these devices. So we need to run this code in a different checkout lane. But when we're dealing with computers, we refer to these as threads. 
So I need to run this code on a different thread. But in an iOS app, we don't have to think about threads. Instead, we think about queues. So let me show you. Now, when this method runs, I'm telling my app that I want to run all of this code. This is the exact same code as before, but I'm telling it to run it on a background queue. And the syntax here is part of Grand Central Dispatch, which is a technology by Apple that helps us write multi-threaded code without actually having to deal with threads, which makes it a lot easier to write code this way. So we just think about things in terms of queues. We have different queues that we can run code on and Grand Central Dispatch will manage all of the different threads that run the code. So in this case, I'm just telling it to run all of this code asynchronously on a background queue, which leaves the main queue open to handle all of the UI events. So now if I run the application and tap on the button, you'll see that the button doesn't stay in that highlighted state. It actually goes back to normal and all of the user interface elements are free to play around with. However, the image hasn't actually appeared in the image view. And if we check the output here, we'll see an error message at the top that says main thread checker UI API called on a background thread. And what this means is that it's complaining that I updated the UI. So this line right here, line 25, updated the UI on a background thread and it's still crashing. So there are a lot of rules that we have to follow when we're writing multi-threaded code. One of the rules in an iOS app is that we have to update the UI always on the main queue. So right now we're in a background queue. I need to get this line of code back onto the main queue, but this has to run only after we've done all of these updates. So I need to do the background task, then I need to do this, this foreground task. Uh, so the way of doing that with Grand Central Dispatch is to get the main queue like this, and then just run a block of code on the main queue. So now when this function runs, will asynchronously run all of this on a background queue. Once that's done, we'll run this code asynchronously on the main queue. So the outcome should be that the data downloads and then we see that image in the image view, but this is all happening on the background, this is all happening on the main queue, and our UI, while this download is happening, should be able to be interacted with and any UI updates should be visible. So I'm gonna tap the button again, the button bounces back to its original state and the image downloads. And if I tap it again, I can interact with these UI elements and we get a new image. So this is the expected behavior of an application. I mean, maybe I'd have like a loading indicator to tell the user, hey, the image is downloading, but this is what we want in our apps. We don't want anything to block our user interface, especially network requests, which can take a really long time, especially if the network connection is bad. So the important thing is that long running tasks like this one should run on a background queue and all UI updates should run on the main queue. And like I said, this technology, this, this dispatch queue is part of Grand Central Dispatch, which is a really complex technology and I haven't even scratched the surface here. So if you're more interested in this, I'll leave some links in the description. One more thing I should mention is that we never download data this way in an iOS app. Instead, we use a thing called URL session. This is the same behavior implemented in a different way. And if I tap the button, it should still do the same thing, download an image in the background. But this is using Apple's preferred way of actually doing networking. And don't worry about all of the details here. I just want you to notice that when we're using Apple's framework like this, it actually takes care of some of the multi-threading for us. So all of this downloading and all of the data here actually happens on a background thread. So we don't have to manage that background thread, but we do have to make sure that we do all of the UI updates on that main queue. So when we're working with Apple's frameworks, sometimes like this will be forced into the background queue and we have to come back to the main queue. And I'm gonna cover URL session and networking in my next video. So check the description for a link to that video and stay tuned for more videos on iOS.